My name is Quanta, and I'm a synthaholic. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at SynthMaster 1, which is a wavetable synthesizer by KV331 Audio. It's the baby brother to SynthMaster 2, and they both share the same engine. Now, SynthMaster 1 has been out for a while, but over the years, it has received cool updates, and in general, just has a lot of great features, parameters, and a simple layout that makes programming your sounds fun. And you just heard a quick sample of the audio quality of SynthMaster 1. I also recently put together a track where I used eight different instances of SynthMaster 1 for the entire track. So if you'd like to check that out, you can click on the corner up above here to the right. And let's start just by taking a look at the general layout and some of the features of SynthMaster 1. And I'll be following up with a more in-depth tutorial in the coming days. So getting a basic lay of the land, up at the very top, we have an area for choosing our presets. And I'm actually gonna click once, left click, to init. We've got undo, redo, save. We can access our browser here, come back to the synth by clicking there, our tuning, and master volume controls. And we have a meter here to check out our levels. But now for the good stuff, we've got two oscillators, oscillator one and two. We then have sub one and sub two oscillators. And one cool thing about these sub oscillators is they don't function simply as sub oscillators if you don't want them to. We can actually click on the label here and then we can use these as amp modulation, ring modulation, and so on. And we'll take a closer look at that in the more in-depth tutorial. We then have our octave controls, unison, semitone, detuning, a lot of standard controls that we have. By clicking on this window, we can select a different waveform or wave tables. We can even use an audio input and use the SynthMaster 1 as an effects device. So let's actually change this to a sawtooth. So if we wanted to do unison, we could change this all the way up to 16. So both oscillator one and two can are capable of 16 unison voices up to a total of 32. Let's set this to five and we have our detuning. And with and another cool thing, let's jump down to the bottom really quick. We have the settings menu here where we can actually add oscillator one and two pitch drift. So we have an amount and drift speed. So let's add a little bit of drift. And there's key tracking amount available for this as well. But let's come back to our keyboard view, make our way back up to the top. We then have two different filters, filter one and filter two here. We have two LFOs on either side. And in the center, we have four envelopes, two mod envelopes and two amp envelopes. At the top, we have a display area here. And this is gonna show our routing for sub one, oscillator one, Right now, the filters are set to series, so this is going to go into filter one, then filter two, and then to our output. But we have the option to change the filter routing to parallel. We can also choose split. But let's come back to the series. And again, we'll take a closer look at this in the more in-depth tutorial, just be aware that that's there. Now, when we hover on a oscillator window here, we could see that that window updates to show our waveform. If we were to switch to a wave table, let's come to the analog and mini 20 pulse. Then we could see the window updates to show as we sweep through that wave table. And also if we were to come to the phase and make an adjustment here, we could see that that's gonna be displayed in our window here too. So it serves multiple purposes and different views depending on what you're doing. Below this window, we have our effects panel. We've got six different panels that we can access by clicking once. And we actually have more than six effects that are available within SynthMaster by right clicking on an effect. So if I right click on delay, then we can see we have up to 11 different effects that we can choose. So if I wanted to use the lo-fi, I could select that we can see that that updates and we can activate these effects by clicking on this button in the upper left window of the display panel here. 
So without our lo-fi, let's come back to our basic saw. Activate our lo-fi. Let's actually come to the distortion, put a bit of distortion. Come to our reverb. There's a lot of cool options for the reverb here. We can control the distance. Time, our damping. So if we'd like more of a plate sound. Let's take our lo-fi off and come over to the filter and place a, take a closer look at it. We activate by clicking on the button here in the left. Now our LFO and mod envelope are gonna be tied to the cutoff by default. So once we introduce a bit of that LFO, so no, no need to do any manual routing, just activate it and make your adjustments. Here we have these buttons where we can switch whether we would like LFO 1 or LFO 2 to affect our cutoff. And similarly, we have our mod envelope that's set to 1, so we have that here. If I come to the mod envelope, let's introduce an attack. We can control the filter type by clicking here. So by default, that's gonna be on low pass. We also have ladder and a few options there. We have diode, state variable, and byte. If we'd like to assign any of our modulation sources to different parameters, we have a couple of different options. So if I click and select the button here, I can then click, hold and drag and say, take this to the panning of our oscillator one. And we could change this to be bipolar. Control the volume or the rate, the speed. Now, if we come down to our mod matrix one, we can see that that assignment is showing up here. Our LFO one is going to our oscillator pan. We can remove the assignment here in the mod matrix. We could also right click on that parameter and clear modulations. And we can see that that's been removed from the matrix below. Now we have a mod matrix two. So in each one of these matrices, I guess that would, I think that's the proper plural pronunciation, uh, we have six different panels and two targets at the bottom. We then have attributes. And if we're creating our own patches or presets, we can assign different information to those, such as the description, instrument types, attributes, styles, and so on. Now, coming back to the top, we've seen we have our keyboard with our standard pitch and modulation controls. We also have scale control, which is gonna be on chromatic by default, but we can also use the user section here to use different scale settings. And again, we'll take a closer look at that in the in-depth tutorial. We then have glide control, vibrato, vibrato for oscillator one and two. So if we turn this up, we have speed, we can introduce an attack. We can re reset our parameters by double clicking. So let's double click on these to take them back to the default. Now next we have an arpeggiator slash sequencer. So clicking on this, we can access that. And we could have up to 32 steps, just make the selection. And we can see that that updates in our panel below. Now this is a small view, but we can click on the magnifying glass to see that a bit larger, that will make it easier to work. 
We can click on the X to close that out. Return to our smaller view. We have volume, swing, duration, our mode. So sequencer, we've got the standard up, down, up, down, and so on. We have our bass time. The range, we can go all the way up to four octaves. And then we have step, note, step, note. And we can activate our arpeggiator by clicking on the off button there, on. Then we have record, and then we cycle back to off by repeatedly clicking. Let's come back to our keyboard panel and come back to the top to take a look at the browser. So if we click on browse, then we can see our browser. Now, we have included out of the box over 1,200 samples that are included with SynthMaster 1. And we could see all of these listed if I scroll up. But we can also filter these out. So at the top, we have all, so we're seeing everything. But if we would like a base, we can click on base. Then we can see all of our bases. We can further filter this down. So if we want an 808, select that. We have our 808s. Let's come back to all for our attributes. We can choose guitar, organ, percussion, and then choose by the attribute, drum, all, the style, ambient, cinematic. And then we also can filter by author here. If we click on the online button, right now we're on local, so this is everything, all of the presets stored on our hard drive. But we can click on the online, and this is going to down, download presets that have been created by other users of SynthMaster 1. So this could really expand your library even more. Those samples or presets are not curated, so you may have a lot of duds in that batch, but you could also discover some really high quality ones to add to your sonic palette. We also have a tab here for the KV331 Audio Shop. And then if we click on that, this will show us different libraries that we could purchase and download as well. Okay, but let's come back to the synth and we can do that by clicking here. So this has been a brief look at SynthMaster 1 and there's a lot of wavetable synthesizers out there. And the question may be why get SynthMaster 1? I think, really, I think the biggest thing that it has on its side is the number of features, the sound quality for the price that they're asking. At the moment, it's on sale for $29. So there aren't too many wave tables, wave table synthesizers out there with this many features and capabilities that are going to be that cheap. The regular price is $80, so that's still a lot less than a lot of the other wavetable synthesizers that are out there. And actually, one other thing that I meant to mention was we can right click on the interface here and there's a, several different skins that we can choose here. So, and resolutions as well. So, you're not stuck with this specific skin or the scale, the size. You can choose from different ones here. So, that's another cool feature about SynthMaster 1. So, this has been a brief first look and overview. Uh, this video was not sponsored by KV331, although they did ask me if I would take a look at it and put together a little video for this. So we will wrap up here. If you'd like to learn more about SynthMaster 1, if you've recently bought it or are planning on buying it and would like more in-depth information on how to use it and its various parameters, that video, that in-depth tutorial will be coming soon. We will wrap up here. Thanks for watching.